In this video, I'm going to talk about a technology that could revolutionise the way that firing gas mapping is performed. That technology is optimization, and I'm going to show you how we've incorporated optimization into Detect 3D. But before the demo, let's talk about the why. If we think about firing gas mapping projects, we're commonly trying to do one of two things. We're either maximising coverage for a given number of detectors, or minimising the detector count for a given coverage target. Since we're either minimising or maximising something, it's natural to think of these problems as optimization problems. Normally we solve them manually by sitting at our computers and working out them ourselves, but there's no reason why you can't use the mathematical tools of optimization to help solve them. This is what we've done in Detect 3D. We've implemented optimization using genetic algorithms to help design detector layouts automatically to maximize coverage and minimize detector counts. It's an extremely exciting development of the software and it comes as standard right now for all Detect 3D customers. Genetic algorithms are an extremely elegant form of optimization based on the processes of biological evolution. In our case, what we're doing is evolving detector layouts into optimal designs. I'm not going to attempt to describe how genetic algorithms work in detail in this video, but at a high level, the idea is that detector layouts are grouped into generations, then ranked from best to worst, and then aspects of the best layouts are combined to form new layouts in a new generation. This process repeats, so that the best layout after 100 or so generations is the optimal layout. We've programmed the genetic algorithm from scratch, so we can do things like automate detector counts, which isn't easy using standard genetic algorithm techniques. One last point is that user interaction is still required. Just like any computer code, it's great at number crunching, but not good at making common sense or strategic decisions. So while it will help you minimize detector counts, you still need to think about coverage targets, fire sizes, which detectors you want, and so on. But in the hands of an experienced engineer, optimization is an extremely powerful tool. Without further ado, I'm going to show you how it works. Here I have the standard version of Detect 3D, and I've loaded a problem that I'm going to use to demonstrate optimization. I've got the geometry, zone, and some subzones around equipment, You'll notice I have a set of yellow crosses which mark out locations I've added that I've told the optimization would be good for installation and maintenance of a detector. I'm now going to load the optimization controller, which is the user interface for controlling the genetic algorithm. The main setting is the coverage target, which I've set to 90% 1 out of n and 50% 2 out of n in the zone, and 90% 1 out of n and 80% 2 out of n in all three subzones. The restriction section limits locations and angles used by the optimization, and all other settings I'm going to keep as default. I'm going to press run here to start the simulation going. And this means the optimization is now trying to achieve the coverage targets I've set using the minimum number of detectors. The blue bar at the bottom indicates the progress of the current generation and there are about 30 different layouts it has to calculate to complete a single generation. We set the simulation to start with just two detectors, which isn't enough to achieve the targets, but it's good for demonstration purposes. And you can see the field of view of each detector in red, which is the current best detector layout that it's found with those two detectors. It's now calculating the third generation and we expect to see a general improvement in the blue and red lines on the graph, which show the coverage of the best layout as it changes with each generation. The blue is 1 out of n, and red is 2 out of n, and you can see me cycling through the coverage for all the different subzones and the main zone. Now you may expect that these lines should always go up, because the optimization should generally be improving the best layout. But it's not quite that simple, as we're optimizing not just on the zone, but also on the three subzones. In other words, we have multiple coverage targets we're trying to satisfy, and in the early stages there may well be trade-offs between those different coverage targets. What's going on at this point is that the algorithm is using a local optimizer to fine-tune the current best layout. 
Although it's probably clear to us that two detectors isn't going to be enough, the algorithm is trying to do all it can to achieve the coverage target with just the two detectors. There are two ways that the optimization can try to improve coverage. One is by adjusting the locations and orientation of the detectors, and the other is by automatically adding detectors. And we can now see that it's actually automatically increased the detector count to three, which has resulted in improved coverage in the subzones and the main zone. Three detectors can be seen clearly in the preview on the right. In this phase, the optimization is going to add detectors until it's achieved its coverage target. And you can see from the coverage lines that it's still not yet close to the 80% two out of n target. So I expect it's going to add a fourth detector. You can just see it's added that fourth detector to try to get there. And you can see the preview now on the right. Now there's other output that we can look at uh, while the simulation is running. For example, here we have the number of detectors. Starts at 2, increases to 3, and then 4. And I expect it's going to increase further before it's reached its coverage target. Now we haven't really talked about fitness, but it's actually a very important concept in the genetic algorithm. It's basically how the optimization rates or ranks each layout. It tells us also how close the optimization is to achieving its coverage target. And usually a fitness of about one indicates that the target coverage has been achieved. The log here gives us a little bit more information about each generation. And once we've achieved the required coverage, we'll see a log entry highlighted in red. So it's very useful to monitor all this information while the simulation is progressing. We can now see we've actually got six detectors in the simulation. You can see them all in the preview. We can see the coverage has increased. In fact, now we've achieved the coverage target, and yes, we've actually achieved it in all of our targets. We can see the highlighted entry in red. And now we enter into the second phase of the optimization, where it's going to try to remove detectors. And you can see it's achieved this already. We peaked at six detectors, and now it's removed a detector, and there's now five. At this point on, the layouts will always be better than the target coverage. It will never remove a detector and then make the coverage lower than the target. You can see here we've got a fitness of about 1 still. So I expect it's going to be pretty close to being able to remove another detector. So we now have 4 detectors. What the optimization is actually doing at this point is trying to adjust the positioning of all the detectors so that it can take one detector out. It's quite a subtle implementation of the fitness function and it's actually found a detector it can remove and it's just removing it now. And now we can see the best layout with the four detectors. We can see the four fields of view in the preview. And the fitness has gone right down to around 0.8, which is a big difference between 0.8 and, and 1. It kind of indicates that the optimization is probably not going to be able to remove another detector. So it's likely that four detectors is the number of detectors that are required to achieve the coverage targets that we set. And we're unlikely to see any further reduction in the number of detectors. At this point, I'm just going to leave the optimization to run its course. From experience, I'd probably stop the simulation at this point and take the four detector layout that it's chosen. But I'm actually going to let it run uh, and restart the video when it's done. Okay, so we're back now, and this is a very common way that we can tell that the optimization is nearing completion. The maximum fitness you can see flatlined and so has all the coverage of the zone and subzones, which basically means the optimization is not finding uh, an improvement on the best layout that you can see in the preview. So at this point, we can just stop the simulation.
We're now going to add the optimized layout to the project. We can see here that we've actually got two layouts to choose from. You can see by the coverage statistics that both layouts are actually above all the targets that we set. Both use four and you can see that the uh, preview of each layout in the main window. I'm actually going to pick the first layout so I can just pick add to project and it's added the fade detectors just as a normal uh, process in detect 3D. So it's added the detectors in the optimized layouts. Um, you're not committed to this, you can edit the flame detectors and their positions just like normal. Um, and you can see here the flame detector coverage all above the targets that we set. And then you can just proceed with the project as normal. You can add contours, Let's set one meter height. And you can do any of the post-processing or editing that you would do on a normal Detect 3D project. So we've seen the optimization in action, and I hope it's given you a flavor of its power. It can be used on much more complicated setups than this, and the main advantage, of course, is its ability to reduce Detect account compared to a human design layout. There are very strong practical advantages too, as you can actually use the optimization to modify existing layouts, leading to a cost reduction as the optimization will improve coverage while minimizing the number of new detectors required. This will also lead to a better response to design changes for new and existing projects. For engineers that are actually performing the fire and gas mapping project work, there's also an increase in productivity as you can set up multiple overnight runs and pick up the optimized layouts in the morning. You can also increase and control quality by using a consistent optimization setup across an entire project. And lastly, if you want to have a go yourself with using genetic algorithms, you can do so by downloading Detect3D from insightnumerics.com. And if you'd like to have more information, you can just email us at info at insightnumerics.com. Thanks a lot for listening.